All right, now we're gonna start the outline. This is um, Natalia's mapping paste right here. I'm just scooping a little bit out and spreading it thinly across the back of my glove. Depending on how big the person's brows will kind of depend on how much of this I'll use, but that's probably enough. Okay, this is the brush that comes with it. I like to coat both sides of the brush so that it's nice and smooth, right? It comes to kind of a nice point. Then I'm going to um, just start making kind of swipe marks on the back of my glove. This will kind of show me how clean of a line my brush is gonna make. Um, keep in mind my brushes have been through like war. So, um, you know, if it's not making the cleanest line, I may decide that um, it's time to retire this brush and get a new one. I don't know. Seems fine for me today. Let's get that back up. There we go. So brows should be brushed up at this point. And then I'm gonna just start where I would apply like a brow highlighter to her. If I were um, not, you know, performing a, a, a henna treatment on her, I just kind of go into where my um, brain goes when I want to use a product like a brow highlighter. Um, one of my first brow trainings was with Kelly Baker, and that's uh, one of her, um, you know, huge selling products is her brow highlighter. Um, and because of that training with her, this step seems pretty easy for me. Okay, so you want that a nice clean line. And if your brush, this brush is kind of getting a little bit beat. So see, I just kind of keep pinching it back together. Now I don't spend a ton of time on uh, making sure that everything's even um, at first. I just kind of get in there and start working, starting further away from the hairs and pressing my line up a little high. Um, if I get any of this mapping paste inside her brow, I am going to have to clean it off and it is a waxy substance. So it might make it um, a barrier, it might create a barrier inside her brow. So it's better to start further away and kind of inch it closer than it is to just come in hot and, you know, make a line that you're going to have to erase, which I am going to bump down a certain part of this. Okay, so you see how I'm holding her skin nice and steady on the side. That's all that we really need. So this brush right here is um, super beat up. <laughs> it's a, I mean, the, the wooden part is beat up. The brush itself is totally fine. Um, this is a uh, filbert is what it's called. And this is probably um, a 10. Um, sometimes I use um, 12s or eights. Um, it just kind of depends on what the art store has available. All right. So like I said, I don't spend a huge amount of time on any one spot um, because I just wanna see what it ends up looking like, what my, my rough draft ends up looking like when I'm all done. Um, and then I start comparing and moving lines around based on um, where we need to create evenness. Um, so you see how I'm always kind of holding her face nice and tight um, and it really doesn't take a whole lot, right? I hope my ponytail wasn't right in the way for that. Um, <laughs> and pushing that line down, it might appear as though it's too close, like it's in her hair, but it's not. Um, we want it nudged all the way down to where her dominant hairs are coming out of her head. So if she was kind of full and had a lot of hair up here that we were going to wax off, um, this line would be below those hairs. Um, everything above this line is going to get waxed off and everything below it is going to get henna on it. Um, whenever I am holding um, my mapping brush, it is always going to stay on the outside of her brow. Um, that is how you get the, the flat line, right? Like wherever the edge of your brush is is where the flat line is. And we want that flat line 
bordering her brow, not this fuzzy part, right? So I would never hold it like this. It's not going to create the flat line where we want it exactly, and you'll be also getting mapping paste into her, her brow. So um, doing kind of a, a, a reach around technique like this is how you can stand behind her and clean your bottom line if you'd like. Okay, so we're getting close here. Chances are just by getting to know the muscles in her face uh, and her bone structure, um, this step will just become easier and easier. I can't even see what I did over here because I'm standing on the other side. But again, this is just a testament to just getting to know people's bone structure um, and muscle structure in her face. If she had a much more um, dominant muscle right here, right? If she used her, her 11s muscles, whatever they want to call this, a lot more, she would have a, she would have a much more of a, a pronounced muscle right here, right? So our line would have to compensate for that. Um, being that she doesn't, she's pretty young, and um, although I know that she has quite a challenging career, these muscles are nice and straight, so nice and flat. Um, so you kind of just keep going until you create the same look on both sides. I hope my ponytail is not getting in the way today. Um, I think I'm gonna lay her back just a little bit further because I'm short and I can't see. There we go, lift her up. I might end up getting in the way of the lens just a little bit here while I bump my line down. So you, can you see how I have to maneuver around to keep my brush on top of her brow? Um, I don't want it to um, get inside and get any uh, mapping paste in her brow, which I see like a little bit on the top of that. So I just kind of use my cleanup brush as like a hairbrush almost and just pull that that mapping paste residue off of it. Okay, I like my line super clean and and not really super duper thick, but um, I don't like them fuzzy at all. I like them very deliberate so that I know exactly where I'm going with my henna. Um, and if you do get to know the muscles and the bone structure of your client fairly well, what you'll notice is these lines connect. Now granted, you know, what do they say? Sisters, not twins, yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, you can see I'm not using any string. I'm not using any rulers taped to her head or anything. I'm not even using the rest of her face to help guide me into figuring out what her um, shape should be. We're just um, sketching. I mean, that's kind of what I call it, all outlining, sketching, um, and and if you just kind of go into it a little bit low pressure like that, um, I'm just going to sketch around her brows. You know, this doesn't need to be a 45-minute um, brow mapping ordeal. Um, we're not microblading here, right? We're not, we're not creating anything too permanent. I mean, those lines are looking fairly straight as well. So you see every time I, I touch her, I do it with evenness, right? Like... Um, thumb and forefinger, pull and stretch. You'll kind of relax her brow just to double check your lines as you're doing that. Um, always holding your client's face kind of tight. So you can see again, thumb goes straight to the edge of her face. Helps hold it tight. All of these different holds that I'm doing, you'll, will just start to become second nature for you. Oh, I should slow down. Okay, so you see, this part where, you know, um, it drops down the furthest into her nose, right? This little valley right there. Okay, we do not want your brush angled out or straight up. Okay, start in that little nook, angle your brush out. And you see I'm, again, holding her kind of tight on that side. You might want to do it more right there. Okay, so a nice angled out. What this is going to do, now this looks a little square, right? But it is going to look fairly straight when everything is said and done. Also, the way that we're going to ombre her, again, laying your brush out to an angle before you do that. The way that we're going to ombre her 
um, hopefully this shouldn't look blocky or anything like that. Also, if your client is missing hair in that area, we do want henna on it, um, you know, just much lighter. Okay, we are done, in my opinion, with her outline. Looking over the top. Mm, everything looks pretty straight. Here's how you find the end of the tails, too. Feel down their face and let your finger drop into um, her temples. Okay, I like it to be right where my finger tip, the middle of my fingertip. Look at that. Dun, 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 dun. It's like magic. Okay, let's keep going.